Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike here at Game From Scratch and hopefully, as of right now, Blender 2.81 is out. It's scheduled for release today. I'm trying to cheat a little bit with this video, getting out a little bit before it's available, but at any time now, just keep hitting that page, go F5 on blender.org, it should be available for download. Now, if you're around for Blender uh, 2.80 in the August or July, a massive release this summer. Definitely one of the biggest releases in Blender history, and 2.81 isn't like that. But there is a ton of great stuff in this particular release, as we are going to see in this video. And there's a lot here to love for game developers. Now, one thing you'll notice is I am actually using last night's last experimental version. It should be functionally identical to what you've seen, except for the uh, new um, splash screen by Alex Trevino is not in yet. So that's what you saw when I first started this video, that graphic, that is the new splash screen for Blender 2.81. Otherwise, what you're seeing here should basically be what is released today. And hopefully, like I said, when this is published, Blender 2.80 will be out. Now, there's a lot to love in this release, and there's a couple of small changes. Here we are in Blender 2.81, and there's a couple things that I've been waiting for for ever, and I'm absolutely delighted that they are there. And the first one, this is going to seem very simple. See over here in the scene, I can now go shift, click, oh multi-select finally and if I want to get rid of something I can do a control click to unhighlight it so this is part of a Google summer of code and you can now easily select over there just like you would in any file system over the last 20 years I don't know why they lagged behind so far on this one but this was added as a Google summer of code project and I love this it's very small but I definitely love it now on the topic of other features that I absolutely love this one is also quite I guess it's not small but it's way overdue um, let's see, don't save. Look at this. This, this is a normal file browser and it's not embedded in a window. It's not popped down. It is a, a normal modal window for selecting files. Thank you, finally. Plus we have um, new searching and filtering options here. This is one of those areas where Blender has seemed antiquated for a very long time. So this new file explorer really makes me quite happy. Now there's one other real, like this is actually a huge feature for game developers at the very least, is PolyBuild got some love. And PolyBuild is for basically building polygons from completely scratch or near to scratch. So yeah, I'll go show you what I mean. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead and add, oh, let's get out object mode. We will add a, um, mesh plane here. Let's scale that down slightly. So there you go. So there we are in, I'm going to switch into edit mode and then turn poly build on. And now you'll notice we have it automatically positioning along where my mouse cursor is. Well, this will do an edge extrusion automatically. Oh, that's so nice. And then we can do some other stuff here. I can actually shift click and it will automatically delete the face. So if you're doing uh, retopology or you want to create your polygons literally from scratch, this is just so convenient. At the same time, you can also do a control click to basically add new geometry. So there I'm holding down control and you're seeing it's automatically popping out. Um, so this will obviously work with existing tools. And notice it's, it's snapping to the edges as I go. Beautiful. I, I, I just love this. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to bridge automatically. So it'll only make new poly but you'd actually have to use like a create polygon tool to bring these points together. But otherwise this is just phenomenal tool if you work on retopology or if you build things from scratch. So that poly build functionality is sure to be one that game developers like. So once again, shift click to get rid of, and then you can do control to add geometry or just grab an edge and drag it out. Also the nice thing is when you're in this mode, you can go over any vertex and actually tweak its position, just like, so you don't have to do a move or anything else like that. So if you wanna just fine tune or control things, go into poly build mode on your thing and you can just quickly wiggle things around, delete faces, add faces. It's just, it, it, it's beautiful. I'm really happy to see this. Although where really the big stuff is for this release, I'm gonna get rid of that guy and let's bring a Susan out here. So object mode, we're gonna add a mesh and let's monkey things around. And then I'm just gonna do a couple subdivides on it. Oh, I get to edit mode. Now I'm gonna subdivide and then subdivide. And the reason why I'm doing all of that is so that we have some more polygons to work with when I shift over here into sculpting mode. And there have been a ton of new tools added to sculpting. Um, so we've got new brushes. So we've got the draw sharp brush being added in here. Uh, we've got new retopology tools here. So we can do dynamic topology and we can actually do remeshing now. So if we want to bring this guy to a lower polygon version, we can come up here to this new remeshing. So there's the remesh and then there's dyno topology. Uh, but what we're gonna do is remesh first. Uh, I can preserve volumes, so I can smooth out the normals, we can change the amount by it, and then we can remesh down. So there you're seeing a lower polygon version of what we got. 
So there's these new two, two new retopology options in here, which are definitely nice. The underlying system was changed. I believe they moved to a voxel data structure on the back end for sculpting. And that's part of what you're seeing right there. But there's a ton of new stuff that was added. One of the new things here is the pose brush. So if you're working with, so you see we've got new uh, indicators. So you can see the, the white dot, that's where the brush is actually going to interface, which is cool. And then you can see the areas of influence of this actual brush. And what the pose brush allows you to do, it doesn't change the underlying geometry at all. But if you're doing bends and twists for like animation or just, you know, you want to wrinkle a brow or something along those lines, so we wanted to furrow his brow in, you can use the pose brush to do that. Uh, we got a couple other new brushes that were added here. So as mentioned, we have the pose brush, we have the edge sharp brush, right, or draw sharp brush right here. Uh, we have the elastic, which one is elastic? This is based on Pixar's technology and I cannot find it for some reason. Oh, there it is. Here we go. So this one is kind of like a, blue. you get the idea. Uh, so if you're just kind of doing organic shapes, the workflow just got a whole lot smoother and quicker. And the cool thing is they've also added the ability to do um, normal translations like you would in modeling to this mode. Another thing that they've added here is masking. And masking gives you a couple of abilities. So we can come, we're in masking, uh, oh, that's box high, sorry, box mask. So let's say, actually I'm gonna paint mask. So we got three different tools here. So we're gonna use the paint mask. And you see I'm just marking down a certain area like so. And then when it's masked off, like that, let's say our hair. So got it all masked off and then we do a brush like this. When I get to the masked area, it won't be affected. But that's not all masking does. It doesn't just exclude things. We can also use it to go, so once we've got that mask selected, I can come up here and I can actually do extraction. So what we're gonna do is do an extract of the mask and yep, okay, we're good. And you'll notice it basically just created a thick polygon shell of the selected surface. So if you wanted to do something like hair or clothing or something from an existing model, you can extract it out using this new masking tool. So sculpting got a lot of love. It's got that new retopology tools in there. Um, and yeah, that's basically what I'm going to demonstrate inside of Blender, but there's a bunch more to it as we are going to see right now. So right now we are actually at the uh, Blender release notes. You'll notice I'm actually going through the, the release notes, the in progress ones. So these are probably going to get updated by the time it's released later today. Uh, unless, of course, it's released now, which would be awesome. Um, so you see here, we got a ton of new features. So sculpting across the board, you got the, the new, so you got masking tools here. Um, you got the grab active vertices, snaps the maximum strength of the grab brush to the highlighted active vertices. We kind of saw that going on with the thing. Normal radius, you can control how sensitive the sculpt normal direction is to the underlying surface. You got those new indicators coming in. The masking that we saw. Um, oh, one other thing I didn't show is we also have, let me go back to Susan. And let's go back to sculpt mode. We also have, and I don't personally see a huge feature for this, but we have mesh filtering now. So you see the, the restraints over here. Um, so we've got different options. So we've got uh, inflate, spherize, and this actually applies to the whole thing. So the entire surface is going to get spherized. So you see we're, we're rounding out Susan as we go like that. So we have uh, global filters that could be applied to the entire sculpting surface available down there as well. All right, back to the release notes. Um, so we got new tools, the pose brush you saw, elastic deform brush, tr uh, translate, rotate, and scale using the familiar transform tools now during sculpt, transforming around a pivot point and taking into account symmetry. That's cool. Uh, draw brush, sharp brush was added, and then the mesh filter tool I just showed you right there. The remeshing tools have come in, so there's now a QuadraFlow and the Open V2B voxel version for making uh, quick remeshes. Uh, the QuadraFlow one will create you a better, and it'll be a quad-based mess with mess uh, mesh with few poles and edge loops. Uh, but it'll take longer to do. On top of that, RTX support is in there. Um, so Cycles now has experimental support for rendering with hardware accelerated ray tracing on, on NVIDIA RTX graphics. Uh, the uh, I think. Yeah, the optics back end was contributed by NVIDIA as well. So remember, NVIDIA just sponsored them at the platinum level. So uh, that's nice to see some stuff coming from that partnership. Intel, who don't sponsor them at the same level, by the way, Intel. <coughs> Uh, they uh, have their Intel Open Image Denoising. Um, so it's added to the compositor to denoise renders using the Open Image Denoise library. Uh, four samples without denoise, four samples with denoise. Uh, now this is a little on the extreme size, but you get an idea of what denoising does. Um, 
So uh, Cycle's got some love as well. Uh, you can get preview passes in the viewport, so you can break it down to see individual passes, so they're diffuse, glossy, ambient occlusion, normal, or combined. So that you can now control that in the viewport shading settings. Um, Mouse improvements on shader notes for cycles in EV. Uh, so we've got uh, volume info, vertex color, uh, map range, white noise, clamp math and vector math, mapping and Veroni, Musgrave and noise uh, improvements across all of those things. Reduce shadow terminator artifacts for bump mapping with diffuse BSDFs. So there you can see before and after. Definitely better shadows on the after. Uh, Eevee got some love. Uh, soft shadows have been completely rewritten uh, to be easier to set up, look and match cycles better. Volumetrics are now faster to compute on modern GPUs. Bump mapping gives more accurate results closer to cycles. Support for instance lights and shadows cast uh, and shadow casters. Contact shadows now follow the light shape. Sunlights now have their um, clip distances automatically computed. Holdout is now supported uh, with both opaque and semi-transparent surfaces. Transparency handling has been reworked and now supports the same BSDF combinations as cycles. Grease Pencil got some love. New brushes, improved stroke quality, new tools, and performance improvements. Uh, so the new brush you can see is Mark Chisel uh, Ink Pen, Ink Pen Rough, Marker Bold, Pencil Soft, Pencil Pen, and Airbrush. Convert curves to Grease Pencil. That's definitely cool. Isometric Guides, uh, Self Overlap. Uh, the new file browser, once again, has all kinds of features in there that should have been there all along. It's lovely. So you got vertical list format. You got a thumbnail view, if that is your jam. And then you have a sidebar option. So it's nice to see this uh, file explorer move into the modern age. And then again, the improvements to Outliner. These are two, you know, they're not the sexiest features, but they're so long overdue. Because this is the stuff that in Blender doesn't work like you would expect it to. Uh, and especially in the Outliner. So we've got improvements here. So you can now, uh, selection is synced with the view. Viewport, so when you select something, it'll definitely be selected in the viewport. Range selection with shift click, extend selection with control click, adding to selection um, without deselecting with control shift click. Uh, drag and drop for parenting multiple objects. Navigate up and down keys, expand with left, right. Uh, hold shift to apply recursively. Box select with click and drag. Expand arrow, click and drag to expand or collapse multiple items. Object selection with eyedropper now works in the outliner. Outliner uh, Filter options to show hidden objects. And F2 to rename. And F2 actually got a ton of power in it. So it, it's a very powerful uh, rename feature, including uh, you know rename by type and masking and so on. Definitely Definitely uh, some nice improvements there. And again, this sounds a little bit scary to get used to, but literally this is just the way every single other program does selections. So it's going to be immediately intuitive to any of you guys. Uh, we've also got some new transform and snapping changes. So uh, it is now possible to move objects uh, origins directly. This is an alternative method to adjusting the origin previously only possible by pasting the cursor and selecting and setting an object's origin to the cursor, which is always a little annoying. So that's definitely a nice improvement. Again, long overdue. Two new snap options, uh, edge center to snap to the middle of an edge. Thank you. An edge perpendicular to snap to the nearest point on an edge. Transform parent. You can now transform parents without affecting their children. That's also nice. And this is really nice. For mesh editing and vertex weight paint modes, mirroring now supports X, Y, and Z axes and multiple axes simultaneously. That's, I think it was previously confined to the X axis. That is a nice improvement as well. Polybuild got the love we kind of showed. So once again, if you're going to start doing retopology stuff, it is great there. Library overrides. Library overrides is the new system designed to replace and supersede proxies. Um, compared to proxies, library overrides support multiple um, independent overrides of the same linked data. Uh, link a character once, instance it multiple times. So if you've got a crowd, you're using the same uh, container, uh, sorry, same character, uh, you can link it in multiple times and only have one of them. Uh, adding new modifiers and constraints anywhere in the stack, recursively chaining overrides, i.e. link and override overrides from another library file, et cetera. Now this is one of those areas that's always been a little confusing. So hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to work with. And viewports got some love. Local collections, each viewport can now have its own set of visible collections, specular control on map caps. Uh, so there was a, a rename here Matcap became something else. It's now Matcap again, uh, or I might be screwing that one up. Basically, we're back to the old naming convention here, and Workbench Matcaps can now be open EXR images with separate diffuse and specular layers. Mesh analysis overlay now supports meshes with modifiers instead of only the original mesh. Image objects uh, can now be set to display only in side view for a better workflow when used as a reference. That's lovely if you're doing any kind of tracing. Um, 
HDRI strength control and rendered shading uh, improvements were made to render preview so it supports turning off all scene lights in custom world HDRI for a look uh, development. Oh, it was look, look dev that was changed. It was renamed and then named back. Uh, battery name. Uh, as I mentioned early on, uh, the F2 key now has superpowers so you can actually do full reg on expressions, finds. Um, Find and replace with regular expressions, set prefix on su or set prefix or suffix, strip characters, change capitalization, filter by data type. So the, the find and, and rename functionality is really powerful this time. And then we got a number of other features upgrade to Python 3.71, GLTF 2.0 support. That was nice for uh, game developers doing exports out, uh, improvements to FBX support, uh, WebM support, and so on. So definitely a nice release. So that is at least the... Um, the work in progress, let me do a quick refresh. Maybe it's released by now. Let's try this and reload. Oh, 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 it's out. Woohoo! my timing is perfect. So good news, guys, it is out right now. All right, so the final release notes are here. You're gonna notice they pretty much look exactly this. Oh, no, they added a couple of videos. Uh, but for the most part, same content, so don't worry. But it is out. So great news, Blender 2.81 is out right now. Go check it out. Uh, also, if you want a little bit more of a uh, kind of an intro to what was in this release, um, CG Cookie did this great breakdown a couple days ago uh, where they kind of walked through pretty much everything we just covered there with a couple of other examples. So if you don't particularly like the uh, Blender release notes for some reason, check these ones out. They've got a lot of, you know, examples of the things in action, you know, the new brushes kind of before and after. So um, I will link that in the linked article below along with the link to the release notes from Blender 2.0. So excellent news, Blender 2.81 is out right now. Go get it before their servers go down. All right, talk to you all later and goodbye.